Uh, our great student preparing for Jamie 2024. We welcome you to this video of sources. This is the video that will prepare you to 300 plus, 90 plus in chemistry. This video will prepare you to 90 plus in chemistry. Welcome to this video. In this video, we shall look at almost 100 questions which are likely to come out. We are starting now. Uh, let us look at the first question. Let's look at the first question. The first question says, uh, according to this diagram, the letter X, Y, Z, the letter X, Y, Z, respectively are, the letter X, Y, Z, respectively are. This question is under interconvertibility of state of matter. Don't forget we have four state of matter, which are what? Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and there's a fifth one that occur under extreme condition. That is what both both S time condensate. This one occur at an extreme under extreme world condition. But we are going to look at the interconvertibility of this first state of matter. When you have solid changing towards liquid, and liquid changing back to solid, <coughs> you have liquid. Changing toward gas, <clears throat> liquid changing toward gas, and you have gas changing back to liquid. You have solid changing toward gas, and you have gas changing back toward solid. Let me call this one A, B, C, E, F, uh, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, and F. What is the meaning of A? When you have solid changing toward liquid, when you bring out your eyes from your deep freezer, you bring it out. What happened to that ice? It melts. This process is known as melting, solid to liquid. It's known as what? Melting. It's known as melting. Take note, melting. Then when you add liquid to solid, when you put your what? Your water in your deep freezer, what happened? The water will change to ice. That means it freezes. That means from liquid to solid, B is what? Freezing. Then C from gas to liquid. Gas to liquid. When you have gas changing back to liquid, that process is known as what? Condensation. Condensation. Then liquid to gas. D. Liquid to gas. Liquid to gas. D. Liquid to gas. When you have liquid change to gas, that one is known as evaporation. Evaporation, or you can call it what boiling, or boiling, or boiling. Then when you have solid to gas, E, solid to gas, when you have solid changing directly to gas without passing through the liquid states, that one is known as sublimation. Sublimation. That means when solid change direct to gas without passing through the liquid state, sublimation. And what are the substances that are sublime? What are the crystals that can sublime? We have iodine crystal can sublime. We have ammonium chloride crystal can sublime. We have naphthalene can sublime. Naphthalene can sublime. We have dry ice. Dry ice can sublime. That means CO2 in solid state. CO2 in solid state. Solid state can sublime. That means that process in which solid state to our gas is sublimation. These are example of substances that can sublime. Then from gas to solid, that process is known as deposition. Deposition. And only substance that can deposit, that can undergo deposition, we have substance that can undergo deposition, is known as frost. 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 Take note. Then we know, take note of this. Take note of this. Gas can turn to plasma. Is it okay like this? Gas can change to plasma, and plasma can change back to our gas. When gas is changing to our plasma, that is ionization. Gas to plasma, this is ionization. Ionization. Gas changing to plasma, ionization. Plasma changing to gas, that is recombination. 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 Take note, what are the examples of plasma? Fire. It's an example of plasma. Sun is an example of plasma. Fire, sun, 
they are example of our plasma. Star is an example of plasma. When gas came to plasma, that is ionization. When plasma came to gas, that is a combination. Then look at that question. What is letter X, Y, and Z? Let's go back. X, that means solid to more gas. Solid to gas, that is what? Sublimation. Sublimation. Gas to liquid. Gas to liquid. That is what? Condensation. Condensation. Then liquid to what? Solid. Liquid to solid. Liquid to solid, that is for freezing. Look at that thing I explained, freezing. Therefore, from here, the correct answer is what? Sublimation, condensation, freezing. B, take note of that. B, take note of that. Please, you can go back to that word, explanation. Let us go to the word, the next question, number two. Number two. Let's go to number two. Number two. Today is today. Jam 90 plus in chemistry. So sate with new tisa with new tisa so sate then subscribe subscribe to this YouTube world you can't get it anywhere you can't get it anywhere you can only get it from your new tisa you can't get it anywhere subscribe share and comment and like please take note of that let's go to the next one let's go to the next one next question number two number two number two we are which of the following change is a physical change which of the following change is a physical change let me quickly explain physical change physical change physical change what is physical change this is a change that is easily reversible no new substance is formed change this is a change a change that is it is that is easily 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 reversible reversible no new substance is formed. Is formed. No new substance is formed. Change that is easily reversible. No new substance is formed. Example: freezing of water. Freezing of water to ice. Freezing of water to ice. Another example: melting of ice. Or you can say melting of ice cream, melting of ice. You can say boiling of water, boiling of water, boiling of water. You can say addition, dissolution, dissolution, dissolution of salt, such as sodium chloride, to water to form salt solution. For example, when you have sodium chloride, salt plus H2O. You have sodium salt plus water. You have a salt solution. You have salt solution. These are examples of all of physical change. Example of physical change. And take note: this freezing point, freezing point, melting point. Take note of that. Freezing point, melting point, boiling point. They are intrinsic property. It's coming out your job. Freezing point, melting point, boiling point. They are what color, color also. They are intrinsic property. They don't depend on any other property. They don't depend on any other property. They are intrinsic what property, intrinsic property. And mass, for example, mass, volume. These are extrinsic property. These are what extrinsic property. Uh, there's a video on that which we explain better intrinsic and extrinsic property of matter. That one is on our paid channel. Paid channel. If you want to, you can work. call the number you see above. You will see more explanation on intrinsic property of matter and extrinsic property of matter. But take note: freezing point, boiling point, melting point. They are intrinsic property. Volume, mass, they are what? Extrinsic what? Properties. Take note of that. But we are not looking at that. These are examples of what? Physical chain. Chain that can easily be reversed. No new substance is formed. Can you see water? When you bring, freeze your water, it changes to what? Ice. You can get back your water. It is easily reversed. When you melt your ice cream, you can get back the solid ice cream, the ice form. It is easily what? Reversing. Take note of that. Then we have another. Another change, which is known as chemical change. Chemical change. Take note of this chemical change. This is a change. Chemical change. 
chemical change. Chemical change. This is a change. That is, that is not reversible. Reversible. That is not reversible. And new, 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 very new. New substance. This one, new substance. New substance is formed. New substance is formed. New substance is formed. Example of chemical change, we have rusting of iron. Rusting of iron. If you have a rust iron, a rust iron, can you get out the new iron? No. Rusting of iron. Neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction. It's an example of chemical change. That means reaction between acid and base. Take note of this. This one always come out. Slaking. Slaking of lime. Slaking of lime. What is slaking of lime? Slaking of lime is the reaction between calcium oxide, quick lime, and water. Calcium oxide, quick lime, and water to form slake lime. To form slake lime. You can balance the equation if the equation is not balanced. This is slaking of lime. When you have quick lime plus water to form a slake lime, to form calcium hydroxide, this is slaking of lime. It is what a chemical chain is not easily reversible. This substance is formed. We are sharing, sharing of sugar. Sharing of sugar. What is sharing of sugar? When sugar reacts for punk H2SO4, punk H2SO4, to remove water from the sugar, then carbon black will be deposited. For example, we have CC H12O6 plus punk H2SO4. What we have? We have cis carbon 12. Then Molecules of water will be removed from here. How many molecules of water will be removed? There are six molecules of water will be removed. Take note. Six molecules of water is removed. This is sharing of sugar. It is what chemical change. Rusting of iron, slaking of lime, neutralization reaction, sharing of all sugar. We have so many and so many. Burning of wood. Burning of wood. Burning of wood. It's also what uh, chemical change, burning of food. Then we are looking for the one that is not what uh, that is not chemical change, the one that is physical change. Let us look at the question once more. Hope you understand. If you can't understand, I'm sorry because I'm too fast. But from the third question, I will become. Thank you, my students, great student. Thank you, of me, Which of the following change is a physical change? Adding iron filings to steam. This one is a chemical change. When you have iron filings, that means when iron reacts with steam, iron reacting with steam, it forms what iron oxide. Oxide of iron is a chemical change. Come on with the answer. We have addition of sodium to water. Yes. When you have addition of sodium to water, it's a chemical change. It's not a physical change. This is it. When sodium reacts with water, that means hydrogen gas will be liberated. Take note, we are still going to that question. That question will be under what? Metals. Metals are their compound. When you have sodium plus H2O, you have sodium hydroxide. Then with the liberation of what? Hydrogen gas. It's a chemical change. I never knew the answer. Cooling of water to obtain ice. Can you see this one? Sharing of sugar is a chemical change. I never knew the answer. But cooling of water to ice. When you pull water, that means freezing of water to ice. It's an example of what is a country. Therefore, the answer to this question is C. It's a discussion. Let's go to the next question. Number three. Number three. Number three. Let's go to number three. We are still going to 70 questions. 70 questions, please. Great student. This is 90 plus in chemistry jar. 90 plus in chemistry time. A mixture of iodine and sulfur, crystal, can be separated by treatment with. Let me quickly explain separating techniques within one minute before we look at this question. Separating techniques, separating or separation techniques, separation, separation. Techniques. Techniques. We are number one, CV. CV. What is CV? CV is a separating techniques that
that is used to separate solid of different sizes. Solid of different sizes. That is CV. When you separate solid of different sizes, big particle and fine particle, small, small particle, then put it on the sieve. Now, the fine particle will pass through the sieve. The big particle will stay on it. That is CV. It is used to separate solid of different sizes. It is used in the world Gary industry. It is used in world mining industry. During mining of world diamond. Take note. CV. It is used to separate solid of different sizes. We have sublimation. 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 Sublimation is used to separate a substance that can change directly from solid to gas from mixture. If you have a substance that can change directly from solid to gas in a mixture, we use what sublimation. Take note of that. Substances like what iodine, ammonium chloride crystal, they can change directly from solid to what gas. We use sublimation to separate them from mixture. Take note of that. We have <coughs> Three, magnetizing or magnetization process. Magnetization process. Magnetization process. This is used to separate substances that have magnetic properties. Substances that have magnetic properties from mixture. Substances that magnet can what attract them from what mixture. Like iron filings. If you have iron filings, mix with word paper, small paper, or mix with word small woods. To separate the iron filings from this wood, we we'll use word magnetization because iron can be wall, but can be magnetized. Number three, we have decantation. Decantation, we have filtration. Filtration. Filtration, we have centrifugation. Before I think this one can be used in what lab, in lab, in lab, to separate plasma from your blood during testing of what blood sample. If you want to separate the plasma from what from other constituent of the blood, we use what centrifugation in what lab. We were separating of our blood constituents. Take note. But these three things can be used to separate insoluble, insoluble, take note, insoluble solid from solution. Insoluble solid from solution. Three of them decantation, filtration, certification. For example, if you have a mixture of gari and water, to separate the gari from water, you can use any one of them. But the most accurate one is one filtration. Filtration is very accurate. Take note, accurate. Because in filtration, we use a filter paper. The substance that stays on the filter paper is known as residue. The one that passes through the filter paper is known as what? Filtrate. Take note of that. But take note, three of them are used to separate insoluble solid, that is solute or solid from what? Solution. Take note of that. The next one. We have evaporation to dryness. Evaporation to dryness. Evaporation to dryness. Evaporation to dryness. This one is used to with a separate salt that can withstand heat. That heat cannot destroy. Salt that can withstand heat. It cannot destroy from mixture. If you have salt that can withstand heat, in which it cannot destroy from mixture. We use evaporation to dry it. For example, when you have your cooking salt, sodium chloride, cooking salt in water, your sodium chloride in water, I want to separate the word sodium chloride, sodium chloride, NaCl, from the water. We use evaporation to dry it. And the salt obtained in the process is what? Impure salt. It is what? Impure salt. Impure word salt. Impure word salt. Take note of that. Next one, we have. Crystallization and fractional crystallization and fractional crystallization. Crystallization is used to separate both of them. Are used to separate salt that can withstand heat. 
such that can easily be destroyed by it. But for fractional crystallization, when you have two or more salts in a solution, two or more salts in a solution, we use fractional crystallization. And fractional crystallization, take note, works on the solubility of the salt. It works on the principle of the solubility of the salt. Take note, it works on the principle of the solubility of salt. Please follow, very simple. It works on the principle of solubility of our soil. It has which of the following works on the principle of solubility? Fractional crystallization. Let's move on. Let's move. We have, we have distillation, distillation, and fractional distillation. This thing, these two, they can be used to separate. Miscible word liquid. Miscible liquid. Distillation and fractional distillation. Miscible liquid. This one, just one miscible liquid. But when you have two or more miscible liquid, we use fractional distillation, such as for crude oil. For fractional distillation, crude oil. Don't forget, in crude oil, in crude oil, in crude oil, we have so many uh, constituents. So many liquid in crude oil. In crude oil, you have petrol, you have diesel, you have what? Lubricating oil, lubricating oil, lubricating oil, you have kerosene, you have kerosene, so many of them. Need so many liquid in crude oil. Then for you to separate crude oil into all this fraction, we use fractional word distillation. And fractional distillation work based on what? Boiling point. Take note. Fractional distillation work based on what? Boiling point. Take note. And it is used in what? Separating of what? Crude oil. Take note. Then let's go. Another one. We have. <clears throat> we have. Separating funnel. Separating funnel. Separating funnel. This one is used to separate two or more immiscible liquid. Liquid that do not mix, like kerosene and water. They can't mix. Two immiscible liquid. They can't mix. We use separating folate. And separating folate works on the principle of density. 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 Take note. It works on the principle of our density. Then we have the next one, which is for chromatography. Chromatography. Chromatography, it is used, chromatography, it is used to separate colored solutes. Colored, colored solutes. Colored solutes. For example, if you want to separate what constituent of what your ink, ink, like this ink now, we use paper or chromatography. And take note, this one works on the principle of what of speed or migration. Migration of the solute. It works on the principle of speed or migration of the solute. Then let us look at this question now. Let us look at this question. A mixture of iodine and sulfur can best crystal can be separated by treatment with don't forget iodine sublime. But in the house of real sublimation, no. No, we don't have sublimation. We don't have sublimation. But there's one thing. This sulfur, this sulfur can dissolve. There's a solvent that dissolves sulfur. When we get to what solvent and solution and our solute, I will explain more on this in this video. Take note: the better solvent when you have carbon, carbon for sulfur, carbon for sulfide, carbon for sulfide. Carbon for sulfide. This is a solvent that can dissolve or sulfur. Take note. This is a solvent. This solvent can dissolve or sulfur. It cannot dissolve iodine. The solvent that can dissolve iodine, let me give you that one. Let me give you that one. The solvent that can dissolve iodine is for ethanol. 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 This one can dissolve iodine. This one dissolve iodine. And when iodine dissolves in ethanol, that one is called tincture of ethanol. 
tincture of ethanol. It is used in what treatment of what wound, wound, wound. Those who are again used in treatment of wound and the tincture when I will dissolve in what ethanol. Then the solvent for sulfur is what carbon four sulfide. Therefore, answer to this question: the what we have water add water to filter uh, sulfur. No, water cannot dissolve sulfur. It's not possible. Water cannot dissolve. Water. Look at this option now. Let us look at this. I told you water to filter of sulfur. Take note of this. The solvent for sulfur is carbon four sulfide, not water. That is water cannot dissolve sulfur. Cannot be the answer. Methanol to filter of iodine is impossible. Methanol cannot dissolve what? Uh, sulfur. Neither methanol or this one. Look at actually A. Water to filter of sulfur. That means water is dissolving iodine to filter of sulfur. And water cannot dissolve iodine. This one. Methanol to filter of iodine. That means methanol is dissolving sulfur, which is impossible. Ethanoic acid to filter of sulfur. That means ethanoic acid dissolving iodine. Not possible. Carbon 4 sulfide to filter of iodine. When you add carbon 4 sulfide, when you add carbon 4 sulfide, it will dissolve or sulfur. Then what will be left without the uh, filter of all iodine? Iodine is insoluble. Filtration, insoluble. I told you, filtration is used to separate insoluble solid. Iodine is insoluble in what? In carbon 4 sulfide. Only sulfur will dissolve. Iodine will be what? Insoluble. Now filter of the iodine. Take note of that. The answer to this question is one. Uh, D. Let us move to number four. Number four says a little quantity of trichloromethane. A little quantity of trichloromethane. I want to listen to this. I will use this to explain some things also. Take note. A little quantity of trichloromethane. We have trichloromethane. Tri Chloromethane. This is chemical symbol of trichloromethane. Boiling point. Boiling point is what? 60 degrees C. They said little of it was added to ethanol. We have ethanol. Ethanol. Boiling point. 78 degrees C. Then I say what we happen to the boiling point of the mixture. What we happen to the boiling point of the mixture. Take note of this before. I continue. We have compound and mixture. What is a compound? Hey, please listen. A compound is a combination of two or more elements which are chemically held together and cannot be separated by any physical means. Combination of two or more elements which are chemically held together, cannot be separated by any physical means. Combination of two or more elements, which are chemically held together, cannot be separated by any physical means. Mixture. Combination of two or more constituents. The constituent can be compound, compound, and what? Element. Compound element coming together. That is combination of two or more constituents, which could be compound and element, or element, element with compound, combination of two or more constituents which are not chemically held together. They are not chemically held together and they can be separated by physical what means. That's why those separated techniques, they are for what mixture. Take note. Take note. A pure substance. Compound is a pure substance. Take note. Compound is a what? Pure substance. Mixture is what? Impure substance. Any mixture you see is an example of what? Impure substance. Impure substance. Mixture is an impure substance. Example of compound, where you have H2O, water. Water is a pure substance. Example of mixture, when you have, let me assume you have, okay, salt solution. Salt solution is a mixture. When you add salt to water, you have salt solution. It's a mixture. This one is a pure substance. A pure substance has sharp boiling point. Take note of that. 
a pure substance as what well, sharp boiling point or narrow boiling point. A pure substance has sharp or narrow boiling point. That's why if they ask what is boiling point of water, 100 degrees. Because it's a compound. It has sharp boiling point. Another compound we have ethanol. It's a compound. It's a pure substance. What is boiling point of ethanol? 78 degrees. Very sharp. Narrow. Sharp. Exact. 78 degrees. But when you have impure substance, where you have salt added to water, it's a mixture. It's impure substance. This impure substance, they don't have sharp boiling point. They have range boiling point. Range. Range boiling point. Their boiling point is not narrow. It's wide. It's range. That is why salt water has what? Boiling point between what? 105 degree to 110 degree. Salt water. It has what? Boiling point of what? 105 degree C to what? 110 degree C. But boiling point of water, because water is pure substance, the boiling point is what? 100 degree C. Sharp. But mixture, range boiling point. Range boiling point. Salt water is a range boiling point. It's a mixture. Impure substance. Range boiling point. From 105 degree C to what? 110 degree C. Range boiling point. And what is the effect of impurities on boiling point, on melting point, on freezing point? Take note of that. What is the effect? Let me, effect. Take note of this. Effect. Therefore, from the, before that, let me quickly explain that. Effect. <coughs> effect of. Effect of impurities. On boiling point. Take note. Impurity. Addition of impurity to a substance increases the boiling point of the substance. Impurity increases what? Boiling point. Impurities in a substance increases what? Boiling point. That is why salt water has higher boiling point than what? Pure water. Take note of that. Salt water is a mixture. Salt is an impurity. When salt is added to it, it has contained impurity. That salt will increase the boiling point. But pure water has what? Low boiling point, which is 100 what? degrees C. But for mixture, which is what? The salt water has what? Higher boiling point. Take note. That means impurity increases what? Boiling point. Then impurity it decreases melting point. Impurities decreases what? Melting point. Impurity decreases what? Melting point. That is why during snow, snow, when salt is sprinkled on what? Icy road. Ice on uh, road that has what? Snow. When you sprinkle salt, what happens to the snow? It will melt in time. Impurity decreases boiling point. Impurity increases what? Boiling point. Take note of that. Then impurity also decreases what? Freezing point. Impurities also decreases what? Freezing point. Take note. Impurity increases boiling point. Impurity decreases what? Decreases melting point. Impurity decreases what? Freezing point. Take note. Take note. Take note of that. Please take note of that. Then take note of this. Take note. When ethanol is added to water, it's an exception. When ethanol is added to water, ethanol is the impurity. Added to water, that one will lower boiling point of water. Hmm. Take note. Ethanol is an exception to what? Impurity increasing boiling point of water. No. Ethanol, when added to water, it will lower the boiling point of water. Take note of that. When ethanol is added to water, it lowers the boiling point of water. Then let's look at this question. When you have a little quantity of trichloromethane added to a large quantity of ethanol, this is the little of this, that is impurity added to this one. What happens? Impurity increases to a boiling point. That means the boiling point of ethanol will be greater than what? This 78. 
Then let us look at one that is greater than 78, which will be what? Range. I told you it will be range because it's a mixture now. The two compounds as mixture, then a real boiling point. Because impurity has been added, it will now increase the world boiling point. Let's look at that. This one is not the answer. Not the answer. Not the answer. The answer is what? B. Take note of that. B. Take note of that. Let's move further. Yes, no for that. Old pirate, yes, they robber. So that to the market she many after they took her. Buffalo soldiers. Jam 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 jam. Chemistry, chemistry. 98 over 100. 90 plus over 100. Let us take this question. Please take this question. Take this question. <clears throat> we have this question. Number five. Uh, we have this question. Right? If one mole of aluminium, if one mole of aluminium, if one mole of aluminium contains contains six times ten raised to the power twenty-three atoms of aluminium. Of aluminium, of aluminium. How many, how many atoms, how many atoms are connected? Are contained rather? Are contained? Are contained? Are contained in 0 0.9 grams of aluminium. We have aluminium equal to what? 20. Seven. Aluminium equal to 27. We have option A, 1.0 times 10 is to the power 23. Option B, we have 6.6 .6 times 10 is to the power 21. We have option C, we have 2.0 times 10 is to the power 22. We have option D, 6.0 time, times 10 is to the power 23. We have that. Another question. Another question. We have number six now. Six. What is the percentage percentage of nitrogen? Percentage of nitrogen. Percentage of nitrogen in calcium triozo nitrate five. Calcium transmitted Where you have calcium to be 40, nitrogen to be 14, oxygen equal to what? 16. Option A, we have 13.1. Option B, percent. We have 17.1 percent. Option C, 27.6 percent. Option D, we have 8.5 Percent. Please let's quickly look at this question. Uh, we are going to work 70 question today. Don't worry, don't worry. God will be our strength. You will learn. Question one. One mole of a substance contains avocado's constant. Take note of that. Take note. Let it be your brain. Let me write it here. One mole of an atom. Of an atom contains contains avocado's constant. This is the symbol for avocado's constant. One mole of a substance contains avocado's constant. One mole of, a, of an atom contains avocado's constant. For this question, the formula is just know this formula. Thank God that we know this formula mole equal to what? Reacting mass over molar mass. We all know this formula. Then from here we have mole. Equal to number of atoms, number of atoms over Avogadro's constant. Take note of this. Mole equal to number of atoms over Avogadro's constant. And what is mole? Mass over what? Molar mass. I can change this mole to what? Mass over molar mass equal to number of atoms over Avogadro's constant. Then let us look at the question. In the question, 
They say one mole of aluminium contain this. One mole of aluminium contain this. Of aluminium. Then how many atoms are contained in 0.9 grams of aluminium? How many atoms are contained in 0.9 grams of aluminium? That means the mass of aluminium, the mass of aluminium has been given as 0.9 grams. Is it it? Then the molar mass, the mass number of aluminium, which should be taken as molar mass. Molar mass of aluminium is given as what? 27. Then they want you to calculate the number of atoms. That means number of atoms. Number of atoms, which is unknown, x. Then from here, you know Avogadro's constant. It's a constant. The value is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 atoms. It has already been given. Take note. Then let's solve that question. From here, now, what do we have? We have this. Which formula? We have mass of aluminium, polar mass of aluminium, number of atoms is unknown. The Avogadro's constant is given as 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Using which formula? This formula. We have mass of aluminium, molar mass of aluminium, number of atoms unknown over what Avogadro's number. The mass of aluminium is 0.9, molar mass 27, equals to x unknown over 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23. Then what do we have? We have 0 0.9 times 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23 over 27 equal to what? Number of atom x. Then from there, what do we have? We have this one divided by this. This one one, this one, you have what? Uh, 30. Then divided by this, let us point our calculator. We have 0 0.9 divided by what? 27. We have 0, 0 0.00 times times 6.02. We have 0 0.2006. Then from here. We have this. We have everything here. We have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 times 10 to the power 23 equal to number of atoms. Then which one is the answer? We have option C. That means convert this one, take this one, which is for 2.0 times 10 to the power 22. That is X. The answer is for C. Take note of that. Let's move further. Please just take note of the word formula. Take note of the formula. Another question. What is the percentage of nitrogen in calcium transfer nitrate 5? Percentage of nitrogen in calcium trouser nitrate 5. Percentage of nitrogen in calcium trouser nitrate 5. This is calcium triose nitrate 5. What is percentage composition? Percentage by mass. What is percentage by mass of nitrogen? What is percentage by mass of nitrogen in that? What is percentage by mass of nitrogen? From here, we have this. First of all, calculate the molar mass of this compound. Molar mass. Molar mass of this compound. Calcium. Equal to the molar mass. Calculate the molar mass. Calculate the molar mass of that compound. Please answer the likely questions. Calculate the molar mass of this compound. Calcium is what? 40 plus nitrogen is what? 40 plus oxygen. 16 times 3. Everything times 2. From here you have 40 plus this one giving 48. 48 plus 14, we have 58, 48 plus 14, 58, we have 62, 48 plus 14, 62, then times 2, we have 124, 124 plus 40, we have 1, sorry, 
I'm sorry for that. 16. Yeah, plus. Plus 40. We have one. We have 164. We have everything here. 164. 164 gram per mole. Then they say calculate the percentage by mass of nitrogen. 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 And we have percentage by mass of nitrogen equal to mass of nitrogen in that compound. How many nitrogen do we have in this compound? Two nitrogen. Two times what? Mass number of nitrogen over the molar mass of the compound, which is what? 164 times what? 100 over 1. Then from here you have 2 times what is what? Mass number of nitrogen, 14. Why am I using 2? Because we have 2 nitrogen. In the compound, if we have three nitrogen in the compound, it should be one. If three times one nitrogen, if we only have one nitrogen, it should be one, just one times nitrogen. But because we have two of nitrogen, that means two times nitrogen over molar mass of nitrogen, or molar mass of the compound, molar mass of the compound, which is 164 times 100 over one. Then from here, we have 28 over 164 times 100. We should give you what? 2800 over what? 164. Then from there, we are percentage by mass of nitrogen. 1, 1. We have 17.1%. You have 17.1%. 17.1%. Option what? Option B. 17.1%. Option B. Take note. They can ask you to calculate the percentage by mass of oxygen. If the question says calculate percentage by mass of oxygen, what will you do? Percentage by mass of oxygen will be how many oxygen do we have? This is three inside. Three times two, six. That means six times what? Oxygen. Mass number of oxygen. Over molar mass of the compound, 164 times 100 over 1. If the question says calculate percentage by mass of oxygen, that means it was 6 times, what is mass number of oxygen? 16 over 164 times 100 over 1. Take note of that. Take note of that. Let's move further. Let's move. Please, we are moving. We are moving. We are moving. We are going to move. This is 90 plus. <clears throat> we have another question. <clears throat> Number seven. Number seven. The question says, the number of we have the number of hydrogen ion hydrogen ion in four point nine grams. And let us look at. Another question, number seven. Uh, before I explain number seven, I gave you the formula of Avogadro's constant that says mass, mole, or mole, equal to what? Number of particles, or number of atoms, or I can say number of ions, take note, over Avogadro's constant. This number of ions can be number of particles or number of atoms. Take note, it can be given number of ions, number of particles, or number of uh, atoms. And what is mole? Mass over molar mass equal to number of ions over Avogadro's constant. Take note of that. Then, let's look at the question. The question says, the number of hydrogen ions 
in H2SO4, the number of hydrogen ion, number of hydrogen ion in H2SO4 unknown is number of hydrogen ion in H2SO4 is unknown. You want to calculate the number of hydrogen ion in H2SO4. Before you can calculate the number of hydrogen ion in H2SO4, let us look at this. When you have H2SO4, when this dissociates, you have hydrogen ion plus SO4 2 minus. That means we have this SO4 having 2 minus. That means for this SO4 to gain 2 electrons, I have to have 2 hydrogen world ion. Take note of this. That means 2 hydrogen ion must be given in what H2SO4. Take note. Because SO4 2 minus, for it to gain 2 electrons, I need to have what hydrogen ion, 2 most of it. Then let us look at this. Before you can calculate the number of hydrogen ion in H2SO4, you need to calculate the mole of this 4.9 grams of H2SO4. Therefore, I have to calculate molar mass. Molar mass of H2SO4. What is molar mass of H2SO4? Hydrogen is 1 times 2 plus sulfur, 32, plus oxygen, 16 times 4, 16 times 4. That means was 60, 64. Then everything here will give you 98 gram per mole. 98 gram per mole. Then from here, let me calculate the mass. The mass of H2SO4 has been given as 4.9 grams. Let me calculate the mole of this 4.9 grams of H2SO4. That means I will have mole equal to mass of H2SO4, 4.9 grams over 98. Therefore, the mole of what? Of H2SO4. That means I have 49 over 980 is 0.05 mole. 0.05 mole. That is what the mole of 4.9 grams of what? H2SO4. And don't forget, when H2SO4 dissociates, how many moles of hydrogen ion is produced? Two moles. Two moles of hydrogen ion is produced. Two moles of hydrogen ion. Therefore, since we have two moles of hydrogen ion produced from H2SO4, then we have 0.05 mole of H2SO4 times what? The two moles that we produce, which is what? 0 .0, 0 0.1 mole, rather. 0 0.25, 0 0.1 mole of hydrogen ion. 0 0.1 mole of hydrogen ion. Because in one mole of H2SO4, two moles of hydrogen ion will be produced. In one mole of H2SO4, two moles of hydrogen ion is produced. Since you have one mole of H2SO4, produce two moles of hydrogen ion. Then from here, you have 0.05 mole of H2SO4. We produce how many X ion? That is this one times this one. We give you 0.1 mole. One mole of H2SO4 produce two moles of hydrogen ion. Two moles of hydrogen ion. Since we now have two moles of hydrogen ion is in one mole of H2SO4. Therefore, 0.05 mole of H2SO4, we give how many hydrogen ion? 0.1 mole hydrogen ion. But the question says calculate, calculate the number of what anions in terms of Avogadro's word constant. I will now go back to that formula. That means from here, I will now have, I will have, uh, please let me know what this, I will have, I will have, and we have mole equal to number of ions, number of ions all over Avogadro's constant. How many moles of two moles of hydrogen ion do we have? 0 0.1. That is 0 0.1 equal to number of ions x over Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. Therefore, from here, and we have this times this. And we have 0.1 times 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23 equal to x, which is number of ions. Therefore, this one will give me 
0 0.602 times 10 raised to the power of 23 equal to x. Then which one is the answer? Okay, the answer is for this one coming in the other 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 22. That is number of hydrogen ion in what H2SO4. That means option B. Option B. Option B. Let us go to what? Number 8. Number 8. Number 8. Please, in this case, in this question, before you solve this kind of question, first of all, know the number of what? hydrogen ion that is produced in the acid. One mole of the acid produced for, of HSO4 produced for two moles of hydrogen ion. Then, what is what? Mole of 4.9 grams of hydrogen. We have 0 0.05. Since one mole of H2SO4 produces two hydrogen ion, therefore 0 0.05 moles of H2SO4 produces what? 0 0.1 moles of what? hydrogen ion. That is this one, just multiply it by what? 2. We have 0 0.1 mole of what? hydrogen ion. Then apply that formula. We get your answer. Let's go to the next question. The next question is on the empirical formula and molecular formula. Take note. What is the relationship between empirical formula and molecular formula? Molecular formula equal to N times what? Empirical formula. Take note of this formula. Molecular formula is what? N times what? Empirical formula. What is molecular formula? The actual formula. The actual formula is molecular formula. Then what is empirical formula? The simplest whole number ratio. The simplest formula. In what whole number ratio? The simplest whole number ratio. That is what empirical formula. For example, when you have C6, A6, this is benzene. Benzene. This molecular formula of benzene. Molecular formula of what? benzene. Then what is empirical formula of this benzene? The simplest whole number ratio. What is common to carbon and hydrogen? Six. Bring it out. Then what will be left? CH. Therefore, this is molecular formula. This is N. Why this one is what? Empirical formula. Take note. This is what is common to carbon and hydrogen. Bring it out. Then it gives you the, the simplest whole number ratio, which is empirical formula. This is empirical formula of benzene. Take note of that. This is formula. Take note of this formula. We are coming to that first. Okay, from there, we have this. <clears throat> and take note of this formula. Relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass is what? Twice vapor density. Take note of that formula. Relative molecular mass is twice vapor density. Relative molecular mass is twice vapor density. Those are the two formula I will use to solve some of these questions. Then let us look at this first question. An organic compound contains 60% carbon. Carbon, carbon, sixty percent. Thirteen point three percent hydrogen, hydrogen, thirteen point three percent. And the rest for oxygen, the rest for oxygen. They say the rest for oxygen. Do you know what it means by the rest for oxygen? That means since you know that this is addition of this, that means addition of everything is. Percentage will give you 100. Add this one and this one will give you what? Uh, 73, 77.3. Then take away this one from what? 100 to get the one of what? Oxygen. Which will give you what? The one of oxygen will give you what? 100. We have uh, this one we have. This one will give you what? 73.3. Then get the one of what? Uh, Oxygen, that means 100 minus 73.3, which will give you 26.7. We have 26.7. That means the rest for oxygen is what? 26.7%. Take note. 
because everything is in percentage. The total must give you 100. They say 60 percent for carbon, 13 by 3 percent for hydrogen, 20, then the rest for oxygen. Add this, take it away from 100, you get one of uh, oxygen. Then the question I say, calculate the empirical formula. For you to get the empirical formula, the what? The mass number of carbon is 12. Mass number of hydrogen is what? One. Mass number of what? Of oxygen is 16. Find your more ratio. More ratio. More ratio. That is 60 over 12. 13.3. Mass number of hydrogen, 1. 26.7 over what? 16. This one give you what? 5. This one give you what? 13.3. This one will give you what? Uh, we have 26.7 divided by 16. We give you 7 point something. We give you 1.6. I'm sorry. 1.668. 1.668. Then from here, what will you do? Divide by the smallest. Divide by the smallest. Divide by the smallest one. More ratio. Which one is the smallest more ratio? 1.66. Divide through by the smallest. That means this one divided by 1.668. Divided by 1.668. Divided by 1.668. Therefore, 5 divided by 1.668. 5 divided by 1.66. You have all 3. This one divided by 1.66. 13.3. Divided by 1.66, you have what? 8.0 something. Then this one divided by 1.1, we have 1. Therefore, carbon is what? 3. Hydrogen is what? 8. Oxygen is what? 1. Option 1. C3, H8, O. That is option 1. C. Take note of that. That is a typical formula. Then we still have more. We still have more. Let us go to the next question. Next question. Next question, please. The next question. The next question we have. What is the molecular formula of a compound with empirical formula CH2? Molecular formula of the compound with empirical formula. Is for CH2 and vapor density. Vapor density is given as what 42. Hmm. Look at this. They want you to calculate what the molecular formula. Get the molecular formula of that compound. The empirical formula of that compound is for CH2. Why the vapor density is given as 42. And don't forget from the formula I gave to you. I told you molecular formula equal to what N into what empirical formula. From here, molecular formula equal to N into empirical formula is what CH2. CH2. Take note. CH2. Before you can get what molecular formula, you need to get the value of what? This N. Before you get the molecular formula. But we can get that using what? This formula that says Relative molecular mass equal to what? 2 times vapor density. 2 times vapor density. Relative molecular mass equal to what? Twice vapor density. We can use this to calculate what? Relative molecular mass of that compound. Therefore, when you know the relative molecular mass of that compound, and you know the what? The sum of this what? Element in CH2, then you can get A. Then you get your molecular formula. Very simple. Let us get your relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass equal to 2 times vapor density, 42. Therefore, relative molecular mass equal to, you have 84 gram per mole. 84 gram per mole. From here, this relative molecular mass is the same thing as what? Well, molecular world. I can use it as what? Well, the sum of the world element in the compound. In the actual formula, which is molecular formula. Therefore, from here, I can say 84. That is MF equal to what? 84. And we have 84. That means the sum of the word, the element, the sum of the element 
in the actual formula of the compound. The sum of what the mass number of the element in the actual formula of the compound is 84. The sum of the elements in the actual formula, which is molecular formula, is 84. I want to get n because this one is 84. Then n into CH2, CH2 carbon is what 12 plus hydrogen 1 times 2, 2, 12 plus 2, making what 14. Therefore, from here we have 84 equal to what 14 n. Then we have n equal to what 84 over 14, 84 over 14, which will give you what 6. That means n is 6. Let me confirm. 84 divided by 14. 84 divided by 14. 6. 84 divided by 14 is 6. Therefore, n is what 6. Then let me get you what the molecular formula. The molecular formula. Then from here, molecular formula equal to 6 into C H2. That means this is multiply here. We have molecular formula equal to C6. Then H, 2 times 6, 12. Therefore, the answer is C6, H, 12. C6, H, 12. Option one, A, C6, H, 12. C6, H, 12. Let us go to number 10. Number 10, the last one for this series before we go to the next series. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Okay. Let's look at this. Then I will give you some condition on that empirical formula. There are some compounds in which we have the empirical formula is the same thing as the molecular formula. I will let you know because it's there in your past question. I will let you know. Number 10. We have a hydrocarbon X. When you hear what hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, that means compound that contain only hydrogen and what carbon. Don't kill yourself. That means hydrocarbon. I'm sorry, hydrocarbon S with a molecular mass of 26. Molecular mass of hydrocarbon X is what 26. Consists of 92.3 percent carbon. That means percentage of carbon is what? 92.3 percent. Then hydrogen. Don't forget hydrocarbon. That means carbon and hydrogen only. The rest will be for hydrogen because those are the two elements in hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon, carbon, and hydrogen. They are the two elements in what? Hydrocarbon. And carbon is percentage uh, by mass of what? Carbon is 92.3. Therefore, the rest, the rest percentage by mass will be for what? Uh, hydrogen. Take away 92.3 from what? 100. What well, we have? We have 7.7. .7. Yeah, we have 7.7. .7. From here, the what? Carbon is 12. Mass number of carbon is 12. Find more ratio. More ratio. That is 92.3 divided by 12 carbon. Hydrogen is 1, 7.7 divided by 1. Then what is 92.3 divided by 12? 92.3 divided by 12. That is 7.7. That is 7.7. This one will give us 7.7. Then divide by the world's smallest. And they are the same. That is divided by 7.7. .7. 7.7 7. the smaller word more ratio and they are the same that means this one will give you one this one will give you one therefore we have the empirical formula the empirical formula is what ch that means carbon is one hydrogen is one 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 the empirical formula is ch but don't forget the question says calculate the word molecular oh, get the word get the molecular formula Get the molecular formula. The question says, get the what molecular formula. Since what molecular mass is 26, then I have this. Molecular formula equal to what? N into empirical formula. What is the empirical formula? CH. 
CH. For you to get the molecular formula, I need to get N. And molecular mass is given as 26. That means I will take this molecular formula. The sum of what? All the elements. The sum of the mass of all the elements in the compound is what? In the actual formula of the compound is 26. The sum of all the elements in the actual formula, which is molecular formula, is 26. Molecular mass is 26. That means this one will 26 equal to N into carbon 12, hydrogen 1. Then we have 26 equal to what? 13N. N equal to what? 26 over what? 13. N equal to what? You have 2. Then for me to get the what? The molecular formula. The formula is what? N, N which is what? 2 into CH. The molecular formula equal to what? C2H2. Molecular formula C2H2. Option A. And before we go, I want you to take note of this. Molecular formula can be equal to what? Empirical formula. Take note of this. Let me write it here. When can you have molecular formula to be equal to empirical formula? But before I move to that, look at this. Look at this. If you have this, C6, H6, this is what molecular formula of what? Benzene. Molecular formula of what? Benzene. What is the empirical formula of this benzene? What do they have in common? Carbon and hydrogen, they have six in common. Bring that six out. What will be left? C. What will be left? H. This is what? Empirical formula of benzene. Molecular formula of benzene. Take note of that. Look at this sugar. C6, H12O6. This is what? Sugar. Glucose. Glucose. This is molecular formula. What is the empirical formula of this? What is common to all these elements? What is common to them? This one, six, six, six. Six is common to all of them. Bring it down, six. Then what will be left here? We have carbon, one. Hydrogen, six, 12 divided by six. That is hydrogen, we have two left. Then oxygen, six divided by six, one. That is one oxygen left. This is the empirical formula of what? Glucose. Empirical formula of what? Glucose. They, that means in this case, empirical formula is not the same thing as molecular formula. Why? Because they have something in common. All the elements in the actual world, <coughs> formula, in the molecular formula, they have something in common. Look at this. Let me look at C285OH. Okay, this one. Don't let me explain with this. That will be C12, H22, O11. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay, let me stop here. But look at this. But look at this. Look at this. This one, they are not the same. But when you are in a case where you have something like this, H2SO4. H2SO4. This is molecular formula of tetrahydrosulfate acid is the same thing is the same thing as what empirical formula of tetrahydrosulfate acid why because they don't have anything in common what they have in common is one one let me put it like that they have only one in common now this one is common to that what will you have left h 2 s o 4 that means molecular formula and empirical formula can be the same if what all the elements have in common is what? One. Look at this. H2SO4, molecular formula of the transosophysis acid. Then the empirical formula is also what? H2SO4. Why? Because they have one in common. Look at ACL, molecular formula. What is empirical formula? It's also what? ACL. What do they have in common? One. Molecular formula and empirical formula are the same when they have one in what common. All the elements in the compound have one in common. Look at this. Another one where you have mm, sodium trisocarbonate form. This molecular formula. The empirical formula is also what? Sodium trisocarbonate form. All these elements, they have one in common. That means molecular formula is the same thing as empirical formula. If all the elements in the actual formula as one in common. Subscribe, 
share and like. Please, thank you.